How much power will the cheap eBay, Amazon, AMR 500 superchargers really make? Check out this dyno test on a 1 liter Metro XFI. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we answer the following question. What happens if we take one of those inexpensive eBay slash Amazon AMR 500 superchargers, the half liter blower, and put it on a one liter Geo Metro XFI, and we also threw in the Chili Bomb. All right, check it, check it out. Metro XFI, look, it's official. That's how we know it's official. Strap onto the dyno. Any guesses? Let me know what you think it'll make. We know nothing about <laughs> whether this motor is going to work or not. It does have compression on all the cylinders, so we're going to try to run it. We got our O2 sensor hooked up. We're on the dyno. Find out how much power. Pounds. That's that uh, XFI camshaft doing all the low speed power stuff. Check it out. Yeah, big power. Now it was time for the AMR supercharger. The factory motor mount was a perfect place for the blower bracket. I used the same L angle blower bracket used to flow test the AMR 500 on the LS. After some trimming and slotting, it bolted right in place. Slotting the bracket allowed me to tension the belt. The factory air cleaner assembly was not going to take boost, so we had to make our own. The factory XFI throttle body was an odd diameter and required a custom blower hat. I cut and welded some tubing and then hole sawed an entry. After inserting the tubing, I welded it in place. After sealing the bottom with fuel line and drilling the mounting hole, our blower hat was ready to rock. Now it was time to hook up the rest of the tubing. Okay, looks like we got everything on. See? Got our little car bonnet. Actually, it's a fuel injector bonnet. Our tube. Got the chili bomb. I obviously need to write chili bomb on there. And then we got the discharge coming from the supercharger. It draws air in from below. Wall goes all the way through here. And then into the throttle body. We've got to get it on the dyno and find out what happens. All right, it's official. Got the chili bomb hooked up. What we're doing is running water. You see, I just cut up a hose, I'm on a hose. Thanks, Lowe's. <laughs> the Lowe's hose. We just got a line hook up. And just run it. You know, or make it run. Good. Find out how much boost this thing makes right off the bat and then do some tuning on it, see what's going on. You can see it's a Virgie hat. Shout out to the Boosty Boys. That sure looks an awful lot like their deal. They did a long time ago when they put a turbo on it. So we got a blower. AMR, you can see. Super Richie bracket. All right, we'll see what happens.
Too much? Okay. Okay, guys, let's take a look and see what happened to the Metro XFI Project Panda Express. Here's what happened when we ran this thing naturally aspirated. I showed you in the previous video, we ran the thing naturally aspirated and then added a shot of nitrous. Here's what happened when we ran the AMR 500 supercharger. So this is our naturally aspirated run. This motor on the XFI originally rated at 49 horsepower at the flywheel. Run in second gear, this thing made 42, 43 horsepower at the tire and also 55 foot-pounds of torque down here at 3,700 RPM. Peak power came at 52 or 5,300 or so. Here's what happened when we added the AMR supercharger, AMR 500 supercharger, because they make different displacements. You can see it did indeed gain power, 53 horsepower, yeah, 53 to 54 horsepower, and torque was up at 72 foot-pounds. Yeah, 72 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see it gained pretty good power, but we ran into a couple of problems. And by the way, this was at a peak boost of about four and a half pounds. And before everybody jumps <laughs> jumps to conclusions here, uh, we have a few things to talk about, both with the blower and bypass valve and, and tuning. So let's take a look at the boost curves. And then we're also going to take a look at the air fuel curves and talk a little bit about what happened and then now what we need to change. Okay, let's talk about uh, some of the issues that we had while we were testing the AMR supercharger. First of all, if we take a look at this, this shows the boost curve. This one was about five pounds. Um, but if we look at the next run, we see it's dropped down to about four and a half pounds. So the first thing we're going to talk about, and I'm going to show you some photos here, the supercharger was going away. You could see in all of the videos, you can hear it. The, the supercharger is very, very loud. Now, the supercharger always has been fairly loud when we did all the testing when I had it on the LS motor. And we weren't running boost into the LS. I was just spinning the blower so that we could measure the airflow potential to see how much power it could support. And this blower will actually support as much as 150 horsepower on the right application because it has enough airflow to do that. But on this combination, I think what happened is when, when I was doing that testing, we way overspun this blower. And I think that I hurt the rotors in this blower, unfortunately, before this testing. So I don't think that this is optimized. When we first started rolling into this thing, we were seeing eight or nine pounds. And uh, subsequently, the blower, I think, started to go away. And you can see the photos here or the video here. And you can see that the rotors are getting eaten up. So I'm going to have to put another supercharger on it, which is going to help things out. But that will solve that problem. But the other issue, even while we were testing, while this thing was delivering, you know, four and a half pounds or so, we could see the problem. The other problem is the air fuel. Now, what I was doing was during the test, <clears throat> as we had the nitrous solenoid hooked up, well, we had the fuel solenoid hooked up from the nitrous setup and no nitrous. And what we were, what I was doing was I had the little remote starter button. And what I was doing was pulse with modulating the starter button to provide extra fuel under boost. The problem is, you could see, it's hard to get it correct every time. In fact, if we look at another run, it was actually a little bit better on this run. It was more consistent, but it's still wavering from... 12.5 down below 10 to 1 in, in the high nines and then back up. So I'm trying to react to what the air fill meter is seeing. <clears throat> but by the time I see that and reacting, you know, it's just hard to get that right. So the cure to that, obviously, there's going to be two things, one or three things. One, we'll get a new AMR supercharger, one that's working well. The other thing I want to do is put a 
blow off valve on this setup so the system isn't seeing pressure all the time so at idle and stuff it's not seeing pressure the other thing we want to do obviously is run some sort of management system i have the holly a single throttle body on there and also Haltech has sent me an EFI setup so we can make this system work the supercharger mount all of that the thing never lost a belt it never slipped all of that worked perfectly the little AMR supercharger if we get a healthy one that I didn't run to 17 or 18,000 rpm previously on the LS motor uh, that should work out just fine the intercooler was working great the, the little chili bomb and then if we can dial in the air fuel and the timing this thing is going to be pretty cool with the AMR blower armature holder please make sure like share subscribe ring the bell do all that stuff and I'll keep testing